Garage version 2.0. Let's talk about track mode version 2.0 for the Model 3. What's up everybody, I'm Brian from i1 Tesla and we're gonna be talking today about track mode version 2.0 for the Tesla Model 3. It's amazing what Tesla did. I'm very happy they went this route and brought in four YouTubers, big YouTubers, that are not just Tesla YouTubers. You know, a lot of times you might think, well, they'll, they'll bring the people in that talk about Tesla all the time. All these channels that are just focused on Tesla, like my channel, which they wouldn't bring me there, but they would bring in like Ben Sullins, Dan from What's Inside, you know, he does a lot of Tesla stuff, but they would bring in channels like that to, to really showcase this track mode version two, or they would just have race car drivers come in, uh, which I kind of thought they would do. What they did was they brought vehicle virgins in, everything Apple Pro, Salamandro, and Amelia Hartford. Four very good YouTubers, three very huge YouTubers, I actually watch all four of these. Vehicle Virgins has been doing this forever. He's, he's reviewed almost every car out there. He reviewed the Model 3, and I think his father actually bought one because of the review. They, they loved the car so much. Uh, everything Apple Pro, he's obviously by his name. He does Apple News. He has a Tesla Model 3 performance, and he absolutely loves the car. So he's talked very highly about Tesla, but he's got millions of subscribers. Salamandran, he doesn't really need an introduction to most of the car community, but he's a huge YouTuber. He used to be a producer of, vid of movies, real movies, and now he's doing the YouTube scene and really just all around great video production and great reviews. He used to do a ton of videos of reviewing products. Amelia Hartford is kind of a newcomer to the YouTube scene, but she's up and rising or very quickly but tesla brought these four uh, youtubers out to northern california to test out version two of their track mode i'm so glad tesla didn't just sit back on track mode and not do anything farther they were they've been working on version two like i've been working on version two of my garage tesla brought them out to showcase track mode version two and show the differences what's what the difference is between version one and version two plus a Model 3 performance package, a track package for the, for the Model 3. That's something anybody can get right now on the Tesla website for $5,500. I'll get into later on if I think that's a good deal or not. You get 20 inch wheels with a little bit wider track, a nine inch width on the tire, uh, with Michelin Pilot Cup 2 tires, beautiful tires. Those are the same tires I have on those right there. Absolutely amazing. Grip for days, tells you how much torque these cars actually have. Those tires are hard to break loose, and they were able to do that easily with the performance. But you also get front brake pads, more track pad, because the pads that come on a performance car, uh, performance model three, are not very good. I mean, they're good brakes, but the pads wear out very quickly if on hard use on a track. So you do have to, you really should get some track pads or something like that if you're gonna go on a track. Probably the most important thing, if you're really gonna brake hard on a track and really try to get every second or millisecond out of the car, you really need to change your brake fluid over to racing fluid. So in this kit, you do get some racing fluid. Basically what that does is allows for a higher temperature before the boiling point of the brakes. Once your brakes boil, you're, you get really mushy and you go sliding off the track because you don't have brakes. You put the pedal to the floor and you can't stop. So very, very important to upgrade your brake pads and your brakes, brake fluid if you're going to track the car very hard. So this update is coming very, very soon to Model 3 performance cars. It's a free update, so everyone is going to get the software that allows you to have version two, uh, anyone with performance, I should say, is gonna get version two. Uh, you have to purchase the wheels and the brakes and everything extra if you want to. That's not something you can order if you order a brand new Model 3 as of yet either. There's no performance package for that. Hopefully the uh, track mode comes out for the Model Y. I did order a Model Y performance and I should be getting that sometime this month in March. Uh, I got my emails, I've put in all my insurance information, all that kind of stuff. I'm just waiting for them to give me a VIN number so I can move forward with it. Version two of track mode, what is the difference? Well, track mode before was a, a way to allow the car to slide a little bit into turns, but there was still a lot of nannies uh, not letting you do a lot of things. Uh, if you spun out, if you sun, spun sideways or you were doing donuts too much, it would kick out of track mode sometimes. I did that in my buddy's car. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> My friend Kyle uh, from Auto Spec Motoring, he's got a great YouTube channel. We go to the track a lot and we're gonna go very, very soon. Uh, he has a Performance Model 3 and with track mode, he noticed that it still didn't allow him, it was a lot more fun than before, but it still didn't allow him to do all the things that he wanted to do on the track. And he's not a race car driver by any means, but he's been on the track for a very long time. He's gone to a lot of schools, so he understands the car in dynamic situations and how it slides. He said that the computer was still holding back. It was not letting him do everything he wanted to. So what do you get in version two? I'm glad you asked. It is a fully customized system, so you can scroll uh, you can move your finger and scroll across allowing power to just the front wheels or rear wheels or any portion in between by 5% increments. So you can do 95% rear wheel drive to 5% front wheel drive. You can do 50-50 and that's kind of what track mode is now. You can go anywhere in between there. Very, very cool Tesla to allow a performance car to be just rear wheel drive. It's, it's noted that one of these drivers, I think uh, I think it was Vehicle Virgins, he put it in front, put everything to front wheel drive and did a launch mode. And when you're going in a straight line, <laughs> this is how smart Tesla engineers are. When you're just going straight, it puts all, thing, all the power to the wheels, 50-50 ratio, so you get the full power output and the fast straightaway. Once you start turning, that's when the track mode kicks in. So when you're, going on turns and everything, that's when it's gonna kick in. So pretty cool. I mean, Tesla's just amazing. To me, anyway. Now you can also adjust the nannies. Sounds funny. You can have it 50-50 in the middle like it is normal now, or you can go all the way to extreme and have full nannies where you know, there's nothing you can do to crash this car. That's up to 10. And you can go minus 10, which is basically all nannies off, where it'll allow you to screw, screw up no traction control whatsoever. So you can go all the way to 100% rear wheel drive with all the torque, 400 and some um, horsepower, and I forget the torque on the Model 3. And then you can scroll all the way over to have no nannies to negative 10 on the stability control. And you can just do donuts for days, spin the tires to 150 miles an hour and roast them in probably 30 seconds. You can just have so much fun with this car legally on a track because you're supposed to use this on a track. You can also adjust regen, so when you're on the track, you can use regen to 100%. You can't do that now, but you can do it to 100%, which is awesome. So you can gain some of that power back, throw it in the battery fast, and then use it on the, on the exit as you come out of the apex. But what's also really nice is when you're in rear-wheel drive only, when you have it scrolled all the way to 0%, uh, the regen is split, so it is just using regen on the back wheels. Again, Vehicle Virgins, he talked to one of the engineers, and regen is smart, so if you have rear wheel drive and you're spinning it sideways or you're in drift mode, it knows not to put regen on the front wheels because if you put regen on the front wheels, it's gonna spin you around. It's basically like putting the brake on the front tires and it's just gonna whip the back end around. So it just uses regen on the back. Really cool. These engineers are geniuses. I mean, I, this, this is why we love Tesla, right? This is, <laughs> they're amazing. And one of the coolest things is something minor, but you can record your lap times. You have your thumb drive in the USB port and you probably have to have track mode, uh, a folder for track mode on there, but it's going to do all your lap times. It's going to record video of the laps. It's going to record G-forces. It's going to record everything on the track. All the telemetry on the track is gonna be on there for you to look at and you can see what you did on every turn so you can get better. You can see, oh, I, you know what? I can go a little faster on this turn. I can. All those graphics will be saved on there and you can look that up on the computer. Very cool, I can't wait to get my hands on that and take a look at what that looks like. And yes, I said lap times. You can, you can set a point on the track and it will do lap counters. So you hold your finger down on wherever you want to start on the track and, every, when, and then you start making your loop and when you cross that line, it will start doing that lap and then you keep going. So you can record as many laps, maybe as many, maybe there's a limit to that, but you can record a bunch of laps on there and see what that difference is. You don't have to have a buddy with a stopwatch. And like I said earlier, you have G-forces. There's a graph there where you swipe over from your tire pressure. It tells you your G-forces, front, back, side to side, and it actually draws a little map out how that goes. You could probably draw a picture if you want on a skid pad if you want to have some fun. And now you can use post-cooling. Post-cooling is really for when you're done, the car will stay on, 
and start cooling the battery off a little bit and start cooling things down because you know it, doing this you use a lot of power you're going to probably average over a thousand watt hours per mile if you're on the track and really going hard so this is going to create a lot of heat so you want to cool it off before you'd have to get out of the car leave the door open and let the fan let, basically let the car stay on and then just let it keep going and let it cool off now this will do that for you with the doors closed and Another cool thing is if you go to multiple tracks, right now it's always set to default and you can play with those. Then there's also a drift mode there. You can customize and say, when we go out to the auto spec motoring track, it's NC car track. I can type that in there and have a custom setup just for that track. And then maybe I go to, I went to the racetrack in Fontana, California. I can have a setup just for that. Every racetrack is different. Every car is set up differently for every racetrack. Why not be able to do that? It's so, I mean, this is, this is, this is next level stuff. Um, the graphics on the screen, when you put it into track mode, it shows the car with the battery. It lets you know if it's warm enough, the battery is warm enough, and each individual tire, how warm those tires are. So if you're, if you're smoking the tires, obviously they're going to turn red. But if they're too cold also, then it's gonna, you, know not to, you know not to go hard on that turn. Because if cold tires, especially in these Michelin Cup 2s, uh, you'll slide. They need to be warm. They need to be a certain temperature before they really start doing anything. Speaking of tires and wheels and the track package, should you get the track package? $5,500. Is it worth it? I don't think so. I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't buy those wheels. I'm not a huge fan of the look of those wheels, first of all, but I wouldn't get 20s. 20s are heavier. Yes, you have less sidewall, so you'll maybe corner a little better, but I would get 19s. I got those 19s from EV Tuning with Michelin Pilot Cup 2s on there. So you have a little bit more sidewall, which is gonna give you a little bit more cushion, but also less weight. In fact, you can get this whole package a lot cheaper. Those wheels, the 19s, are only 1,500 bucks, or right around there. The tires for those are only about 1,500 bucks. When you go up to 20s, yes, they get more expensive, but replacing 19s are, are gonna be a lot cheaper. So $3,000, you can get that set up right there. And if you want to, you can call EV Tuning or email uh, Chris from EV Tuning and say you want the i1 Tesla Special and he'll hook you up with, with exactly what's there. There's different colors for those as well. I don't think I have a discount. I might. If I do, it'll be a link down below. EV Tuning also has some track pads or sport pads for the performance. And then they also have the brake fluid as well. And EV Tuning is actually set up with Electrified Garage. So if you're in that Boston area, I think Massachusetts, I forget exactly where they're at, uh, they can flush out that fluid for you, put the new brake fluid in there, put the brakes on, and then swap out the wheels and tires for you as well. Great service. And they're having a second location coming soon, very close to here. I'm excited. So am I excited? I'm excited, but I'm, ex I'm more excited for track mode. And please, Elon, please put it to the Model Y. We want, everyone wants it in the Model Y. SUVs aren't typically allowed on tracks. A lot of tracks don't allow that. But I think with it being a performance, they still will put it on the Y. And I, I really want that. And I definitely wouldn't buy the performance package, the track package for the Model Y as 21s would be even more expensive, and I'm sure those Cup 2 tires are super expensive on 21s. They do offer them, because Porsche puts it on their 911s. But keep in mind, if you're buying this package and those Cup 2 tires, they only last about, well, it depends on how you drive it, but they only last about six to 8,000 miles. It's a very soft compound, unbelievable grip, and you do notice the difference. They are amazing tires, but uh, they don't last very long. Let me know down below if, if you're buying the performance package or if you're buying that track package, if you already did, because I'm sure it'll sell out pretty quickly. Let me know if you're gonna get that for your performance, if, if this would help you upgrade to a performance, or if you just think this is something that Tesla did to help sell some Model 3s now that the Model Y is going to crush the rest of the EV market. Do you think this is just a last ditch effort to sell Model 3s? Either way, you can't go wrong with a Tesla Model 3 or a Tesla Model Y. If you want that extra performance, yes, the Model 3 is going to be a lot better on the track, but the, the Model Y is just going to be that much more room. And for the amount of time that most people spend on the track, I would go Model Y, and that's what I did. I just hope Tesla sends out the VIN number soon so I can get my loan and everything squared away so I can get my car as soon as possible. 15th is coming up soon. So I'm curious about your thoughts, but as always, stay awesome, stay positive. What, doesn't matter which version you are, but uh, I'll see you on the next one.
How do you like the garage? It's coming out pretty good. I got some work to do. I still need a floor. I got this plastic floor here, but I need, uh, I need some money to do the rest of it. It's like $1,000 to do that. What else do you think I should do? In the comments below, what else should I add to this? I'm kind of curious. I need some stuff. I need some artwork. I need some things on the wall. Maybe to help the sound, because it's very echoey in here. Uh, anyway, see ya.